V. All I can say is that the responsibility for what is taking place rests firmly on the shoulders of Mr. McGregor and the National Coal Board. It is they who are closing pits, it is they who are sacking men. My father still reads the dictionary every day. He says your life depends on your power to master words. Arthur Scargill, Sunday Times, 10th of January, 1982. V. Next millennium, you'll have to search quite hard to find my slab behind the family dead, butcher, publican and baker, now me, bard, adding poetry to their beef, beer and bread. With Byron three graves on, I'll not go short of company, and Wordsworth's opposite. That's two peers already, of a sort, and we'll all be thrown together if the pit whose galleries once ran beneath this plot causes the distinguished dead to drop into the rabblement of bone and rot, shored slack, crushed shale, smashed prop. Wordsworth built church organs. Byron tanned luggage cowhide in the age of steam and knew their place of rest before the land caves in on the lowest worked-out seam. This graveyard on the brink of Beeson Hills, the place I may well rest if there's a spot under the rose roots and the daffodils by which Dad dignified the family plot. If buried ashes saw, then I'd survey the places I learned Latin and learned Greek and left the ground where Leeds United play, but disappoint their fans week after week, which makes them lose their sense of self-esteem, and taking a shortcut home through these graves here, they reassert the glory of their team by spraying words on tombstones pissed on beer. This graveyard stands above a worked-out pit. Subsidence makes the obelisks all list. One leaning left's marked fuck, one right's marked shit, sprayed by some peeved supporter who was pissed. Far-sighted for his family's future dead, but for his wife this banker's still alone on his long obelisk and doomed to head a blackened dynasty of unclaimed stone, now graffitied with a crude four-letter word. His children and grandchildren went away and never came back home to be interred, so left a lot of space for skins to spray. The language of this graveyard ranges from a bit of Latin for a former mayor or those who laid their lives down at the Somme, the hymnal fragments and the gilded prayer, how people fell asleep in the good Lord, brief chiselable bits from the good book and rhymes whatever length they could afford to cunt, piss, shit and mostly fuck. Or oh, more expansively, there's Leeds versus the opponent of last week, this week or next, and a repertoire of blunt four-letter curses on the team or race that makes the sprayer vexed. Then push for time or fleeing some observer, dodging between tall family vaults and trees like his team's best ever winger, dribbler, swerver, fills every space he finds with versus fees. V sprayed on the run at such a lick, the sprayer, master of his flourished tool, gets short-armed on the left, like that red tick they never marked his work much with at school. Half this skinhead's age, but with approval, I helped whitewash a V on a brick wall. No one clamoured in the press for its removal, or thought the sign in wartime rude at all. These V's are all the versuses of life, from Leeds V Derby, black, white, and, as I've known to my cost, man versus wife, communist V fascist, left V right, class versus class, as bitter as before, the unending violence of us and them personified in 1984 by Cold Board McGregor 
and the NUM. Hindu, Sikh, soul, body, heart, V, mind, east, west, male, female, and the ground these fixtures are fought out on is man, resigned to hope from his future, what is past never found. The prospects for the present aren't too grand, when a swastika with NF, National Front, sprayed on a grave to which another hand has added in a reddish colour, cunts. Which is, I grant, the word that springs to mind when going to clear the weeds and rubbish thrown on the family plot by football fans I find united graffitied on my parents' stone. How many British graveyards now this May are strewn with rubbish and choked up with weeds since families and friends have gone away for work or full of lives like me from Leeds. When I first came here, forty years ago, with my dad to see me grandma, I was seven. I helped dad with the flowers. He let me know she'd gone to join me grandad up in heaven. My dad, who came each week to bring fresh flowers, came home with clay stains on his trouser knees. Since my parents' deaths, I've spent two hours, made up of odd ten minutes such as these, flying visits once or twice a year, and though I'm horrified just who's to blame that I find instead of flowers, cans of beer, and more than one grave sprayed with some skin's name. Where there were flower urns and troughs of water, and mesh receptacles for withered flowers are the harp tins of some skinhead lead supporter. It isn't all his fault, though. Much is ours. Five kids with one in goal play two aside. When the ball bangs on the hawthorn that's one post and petals fall, they hum, here comes the bride, though not so loud they'd want to rouse a ghost. They boot the ball on purpose at the trunk and make the tree shed showers of shriveled may. I look at this word graffitied by some drunk and I'm in half a mind to let it stay. Though honesty demands that I say if I'd wanted to take the necessary pains to scrub the skin's inscription off, I only had an hour between trains. So the feelings that I had as I stood gazing and the significance I saw could be a sham, mere excuses for not patiently erasing the words sprayed on the grave of Dad and Mum. This pen's all I have of magic wand. I know this world's so torn, but want no other, except for Dad who'd hoped from the beyond a better life than this one with my mother. Though I don't believe in afterlife at all, and know it's cheating, it's hard not to make a sort of furtive prayer from this skin's scrawl, his united mean in heaven for their sake, an accident of meaning to redeem an act intended as mere desecration and make the thoughtless spraying of his team apply to higher things and to the nation. Some where kids use aerosols, use giant signs to let the people know who's forged their fetters, like Pris or Wales above West Yorkshire mines, no prizes for who nicked the missing letters. The big blue star for booze, tobacco ads, the magnet's monogram, the royal crest, insignia in neon, dwarf the lads who spray a few odd fucks when they're depressed. Letters of transparent tubes and gas in Dusseldorf are blue and flash out Krupp. Arms are hoisted for the British ruling class and clandestine genteel agro keeps them up. And there's Harrison on some Leeds building sites I've taken in fun as blazoning my name, which I've also seen on books in Broadway lights so I can't skins with spray cans do the same. But why inscribe these graves with cunt and shit? Why choose neglected tombstones to disfigure? This Pitman's of last century daubed packy git, this grocer broadbent's aerosoled with nigger.
They're there to shock the living, not arouse the dead from their deep peace to lend support for the causes skinhead spray cans could espouse. The dead would want their desecrator's court. Jobless though they are, how can these kids, even though their teams lost one more game, believe that the packies, niggers, even yids sprayed on the tombstones here should bear the blame? What is it that these crude words are revealing? What is it that this agro act implies, giving the dead their xenophobic feeling? Or just a creed occur because man dies? Sir, sure, what's a creed occur, cunt? Can't you speak the language that your mum spoke? Think of her. Can only get your tongue round fucking Greek. Go and fuck your son with creed occur. She didn't talk like you do for a start, I shouted, turning where I thought the voice had been. She didn't understand your fucking heart. She thought your fucking poetry obscene. I wish on this skin's words, deep aspirations. First the prayer for my parents I can't make, then a call to Britain and to all the nations, made in the name of love for peace's sake. Aspirations, Cunt. Folk on fucking dole have got about as much scope to aspire above the shit they're dumped in, cunt, as coal aspires to be chucked on fucking fire. OK, forget the aspirations. Look, I know United's losing gets you fans incensed, and how far the harp inside you makes you go, but all these Vs against, against, against. I'll tell you then what really riles a bloke. It's reading on their graves the jobs they did. Butcher, publican and baker. Me, I'll croak doing the same nout I do now as a kid. Hard birth I bought me, mum says, almost killed her. Death after life on dull won't seem as hard. Look at this cunt Wordsworth, organ builder, this fucking haberdasher, apple yard. If me mum's up there, don't want to meet her. Listening to me list me dirty deeds And have to pipe up to St. fucking Peter I've been on dole all my life in fucking Leeds Then hallelujah's stick and angel's gobs When dole wallers fuck off to the void What'll Mason carve up for their jobs The cunts who lieth here were unemployed This lot worked at one job all life through Byron, Tanner Lieth ear interred. They'll chisel fucking poet when they do you, and that your cunts a crude four letter word. Listen, cunt, I said, before you start your jeering, the reason why I want this in a book's to give ungrateful cunts like you a hearing. A book, you stupid cunts, not worth a fuck. The only reason why I write this poem at all on yobs like you who do the dirt on deaths to give some higher meaning to your scrawl. Don't fucking bother, cunt. Don't waste your breath. You piss artist, skinhead cunt. You wouldn't know, and it doesn't fucking matter if you do, the skin and poet united fucking Rambo, but the autre that je is fucking you. I've told you. No more Greek. That's your last warning. I'll boot your fucking balls to kingdom come. They'll find you cold on grave tomorrow morning. So don't speak Greek. Don't treat me like I'm dumb. I've done my bits of mindless aggro too. Not half a mile from where we're standing now. Yeah, I bet you wrote a poem, you wanker, you. No, shut your gob a while. I'll tell you how 